and say, I'm super psyched to talk to women. Uh, I talk to guys a lot, and I'm sure as you all well know, um, the women are really the ones that deal with a lot of this stuff. You see what's happening, whether it's with your husbands, your fathers, your kids that are playing football. Um, the women, as has been said many times in many capacities, are the gatekeepers to the family. And I think this is another area in which the women are really um, uh, impactful and can really learn a lot from uh, a greater understanding. And that's me. Um, I'm not as cute with a bald. <laughs> that's me and my dad. Um, I just put this up here because I know what it's like to wonder. Even if your husband or your dad or your son is doing fine with all of the news that's out there, it's a little scary. You know, you wonder what is going to happen, what could happen, what you should do. Um, and so, you know, I, I take this really seriously because I, I'm there. You know, you're there and you're wondering. And so I, I want to let everybody know as much as we know. Um, and to really promote this research and to help it move forward as fast as it can. How old do you think those guys are? Four, seven. They're like five or six? That happens every day, every practice in the United States of America. That is what they do in football. And I know I was talking um, to a couple of women and you know, there are a lot of ways to learn football, and that doesn't necessarily have to be one of them. But that's what we're doing to our kids. And so it's important that we try to figure out what that drill or those kinds of practices do. Um, because that's not just those two kids, that's a lot of kids across the country. Um, so I'm going to start talking about what a concussion is. Um, your brain floats in your skull. It's surrounded by some fluid. And so when you go from moving really fast to stopping really fast, the only way your brain stops is by stopping against the front of your skull. So if you think about those little two kids, they're running and they hit each other, and their brains that are floating have to float and they hit the front of the skull. A concussion happens when, when that happens, when the brain moves and it hits the front of the skull. It's an invisible injury. It's not a bruise on the brain. It's not something you can necessarily see with an MRI scanner or a CT scanner. It happens when the chemicals that are supposed to be on the inside of these brain cells go to the outside. The chemicals that are supposed to be on the outside go to the inside because your brain is the consistency of jello. Jello hits the front of your skull and it's going to deform a little bit and bounce. Right? So those cells are fragile and the membranes of the cells, the outsides of the cells, when they, when they change shapes, the chemicals go all haywire. So the chemicals are what makes the brain function as it does. And if you think about the, the signs and symptoms of concussion, it's really, that's really how you know, right? If you have a headache or if you have, you know, seeing stars, those are all symptoms of an actual concussion. Some concussive blows, I already heard this too, and I'm really glad that you guys are so knowledgeable on this topic because I know when I started I wasn't. Um, so, the impact to the brain, if you think about the brain, again, consistency of gel, you're going from going somewhere fast to stopping really fast. Sometimes those brain cells get jiggled around. Maybe you don't feel symptoms, or maybe you don't recognize symptoms. Um, your brain's still getting moved around in there, and those cells are pretty fragile. So we call that a subconcussive blow. And if you think about alignment, um, many of you probably know alignment pretty well. My dad was one. Uh, it's been shown using some helmet sensor information that linemen get between 1,000 and 1,500 hits per season. That's not just like little hits. Those are hits that are 20 to 30 G-force. That's a car going into a brick wall, 35 miles an hour kind of hits. 1,000 to 1,500 per season. That's not at the NFL level even. That's, like, those are, that's based on college numbers. When you saw those little kids. You know, it's, it's, it's not a small thing. These linemen in all positions, but the linemen in particular, they hit every single play of every practice and every game, and that's a thousand hits a season. Um, so it's important to really think about what's going on. And uh, when we say G-force, it sounds like kind of a weird scientific thing, 
but force is mass times acceleration. So if you think about football players, how they used to be, my dad's kind of a big guy, but they're bigger than, bigger than he is right now. You know, people are getting bigger, they're getting faster. The force of those hits is getting greater. So it's really a problem we need to kind of address as fast as we can. Um, and really, it's not about stopping football. It's not about, you know, killing the game. We all love football. I'm sure you guys love football. I know I do. It's about protecting the players by protecting the game, by making the game safer, by learning what it is that is unsafe, and by trying to change that. And it's really about these guys. Um, you know, there's the NFL is a, is a pyramid that's built on Pop Warner and high school and college. And these guys are the foundation. These guys are where it's all starting. And you know, we want them to have fun, but we also want them to be safe and, and have those brains in the future. So that's my shtick. <laughs>